Do you remember the Cheddar Man controversy? That was the guy who died 10,000 years ago in a cave in southern England of blunt force trauma to the head in his early 20s. In 2018, scientists pulled DNA from his bones to figure out who he was, and the world was turned upside down. Today we're cracking open the mystery of Cheddar Man's genetic code, a detective story written in the language of life itself. Stick with me, because this tale takes twists you won't see coming. Ready to solve a 10,000-year-old mystery? In 1903, miners were digging in a limestone cave, known as Goof's Cave, looking for nothing more than rock to quarry. Then they hit something hard, a human skull. Not just any skull, but one so old it predates the pyramids, Stonehenge, even the invention of writing. This was Cheddar Man, Britain's oldest complete skeleton. This ancient man has since become a focal point for understanding British identity. Indeed, he was even labelled the first Englishman. Nonetheless, a not-too-flattering reconstruction was made back in the 1970s, which made him look like a dishevelled homeless guy. Initial studies of Cheddar Man's remains relied heavily on morphological assessments and the limited scientific tools available in the early 20th century. These early examinations offered basic insights into his age, stature and lifestyle, but left many questions unanswered. Over the years, Cheddar Man has been at the centre of scientific debates, particularly concerning his physical appearance and ancestry. Recent advancements in DNA analysis and artificial intelligence have provided groundbreaking insights, challenging previous assumptions and shedding new light on this ancient Britain's genetic heritage. A major controversy in the discourse came when researchers conducted a more detailed genetic analysis of Cheddar Man's remains. This study suggested that he possessed a combination of dark skin and blue eyes, a striking contrast to the lighter skin tones commonly associated with modern Britons. Cheddar Man wasn't who we thought he was. Scientists expected him to resemble modern Europeans. Fair skin, light eyes, maybe blonde hair. After all, he lived in southern Britain, right? Wrong. His DNA painted a different picture. Dark skin, dark curly hair and blue eyes. Bang! The depiction of Cheddar Man with dark skin and blue eyes sparked widespread media attention and public debate, challenging preconceived notions about the appearance of early inhabitants of Britain. However, Susan Walsh, a co-author of the original study, stressed that the study doesn't conclusively demonstrate Cheddar Man had dark to black skin. We cannot place such confidence in the DNA analysis, she said. For one thing, Cheddar Man's DNA has degraded over the last 10,000 years. According to Walsh, it's not a simple statement of this person was dark-skinned. It is his most probable profile based on current research. In fact, we are not ready to predict the skin color of prehistoric people just from their genes. That's because the genetics of skin pigmentation turn out to be more complex than thought, she said in a 2018 article in New Scientist magazine. Indeed, just weeks before the Cheddar Man reconstruction was released, a group led by Sarah Tishkoff at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia published a paper on the genetics of skin pigmentation in people from Eastern and Southern Africa. The conclusions were the same. The study concluded that known skin pigmentation genes, discovered primarily in East Asian and European populations, don't explain the variation in skin pigmentation in every population. The idea that there are really only about 15 genes underlying skin pigmentation isn't correct. It now seems likely that many other genes affect skin color, the authors stated at the time. According to the University of Pennsylvania study, there is a persistent myth that there is a default human skin color, but this is not the case. Humans have had genes for both light and dark skin and everything in between for at least a million years. You might have heard that the gene responsible for light skin only evolved in the last 30,000 years, but it is not that simple. While the specific gene for light skin that is most common in Europeans evolved recently, there are dozens of skin pigmentation genes, including some that are one million years old, that can produce light skin. The same goes for blue eyes. A 2008 study concluded the a single gene for blue eyes evolved only 8,000 years ago, but more recent studies have pushed back the origin of blue eyes to at 42,000 years ago. The 2018 study, while groundbreaking at the time, were based on the genetic markers known and the analytical methods available at the time. In fact, the results were based on a software program developed as part of a 2013 PhD project. 
The leader of the project even stated that the degree of certainty for skin pigmentation, especially, was very low. The website for this tool is still available online, and you can see how dated this tool is just by the web interface. The default skin tone for the software seemed to have been set to dark, which likely led to errors. As genetic research progressed, so did the tools and techniques used to interpret DNA data. Artificial intelligence, with its ability to process vast datasets and identify complex patterns, has emerged as a powerful tool in genomics. Cheddar Man's genetic legacy represents a time when hunter-gatherers dominated Western Europe, before the waves of migration and cultural shifts that shaped the modern European gene pool. Now, researchers have reanalyzed Cheddar Man's genome with the assistance of advanced artificial intelligence. Now, in 2025, researchers embarked on a project to reanalyze Cheddar Man's genome using state-of-the-art AI algorithms. The goal was to obtain a more nuanced understanding of his phenotype by considering a broader spectrum of genetic markers and their interactions. Now, here's Cheddar Man's real DNA. No dogma, just facts. You can see in these images how researchers copied the genetic data from the supplementary information in the 2018 study and asked artificial intelligence to analyze the data. Unlike the original 2018 study, which merely told us the results, this new analysis shows how the results were arrived at by explaining the function of each of the 41 genes involved in the pigmentation study. The AI-driven analysis has yielded surprising results. Contrary to the 2018 study, the new findings suggested that Cheddar Man had blue eyes, red hair, and a light to moderate skin tone. This revelation was particularly shocking given the previous portrayal of him with dark skin. First of all, some genetics terminology. An allele is a gene variant. Every gene has multiple different variants, some ancient and some more recent. You may remember from biology class that you get one copy of a gene from each parent. This is true, but more specifically, you get one copy of each gene variant, or allele. The key to understanding Cheddar Man's revised appearance lies in the detailed examination of specific genes associated with pigmentation. The analysis confirmed the presence of genetic variants linked to blue eye pigmentation. This aligns with previous findings and supports the depiction of Cheddar Man with blue eyes. The important allele for blue eyes is known as HERC2. This allele is critical for eye color. The modern allele is strongly associated with blue eyes as it reduces melanin in the iris by affecting OCA2 expression. In this case, Cheddar Man had the derived allele from both parents, indicating a nearly 100% likelihood of blue eyes. Artificial intelligence also identified several mutations in the MC1R gene, which are strongly associated with red hair and freckles. These mutations suggest that Cheddar Man had a high likelihood of possessing red hair. Multiple MC1R mutations strongly suggest red hair, and Cheddar Man has four different MC1R alleles that favor red hair, freckles, and a reduced ability to tan. As we have discussed, skin color is influenced by multiple genes. The new analysis focused on several significant genes related to skin tone. Cheddar Man's genome revealed three alleles associated with lighter skin and one linked to darker skin. Initially, this combination might suggest an intermediate skin tone. The modern allele SLC24A5 is a major determinant of light skin in Europeans, but Cheddar Man possessed a copy of the ancient allele that is common in African and Asian populations. However, Cheddar Man also possessed the modern allele for the SLC45A2 gene variant, associated with lighter skin. Furthermore, he has the modern allele on the TYR gene variant, which also contributes to lighter skin pigmentation. So out of four important skin pigmentation genes, Cheddar Man has three for lighter skin and one for darker skin. As mentioned, the SLC24A5 allele is common in African and Asian populations. But in some of those populations, the gene is muted by the presence of lighter skin genes, especially in East Asian populations. The kicker is the presence of multiple MC1R mutations, which are also linked to light skin, and indicates that Cheddar Man's skin was much lighter than previously thought. Having red hair and black skin is almost 0% probability. This comprehensive genetic assessment challenges the earlier hypothesis of Cheddar Man having dark to black skin. 
It underscores the importance of considering the interplay between various pigmentation genes rather than evaluating them in isolation. Thus, Cheddar Man's pigmentation is blue eyes, red hair, and fair or very light skin, typical of individuals with red hair and these light skin alleles. When Cheddar Man lived, 9,000 to 10,000 years ago, the climate in Britain was warming during the early Holocene, with mild summers, cold winters, increased rainfall, and extensive birch pine forests. Sea levels were lower, connecting Britain to Europe via Doggerland, and the environment supported hunter-gatherer life with diverse fauna and flora. This temperate, post-glacial climate contrasts with the harsh, cold conditions of the Ice Age, allowing the lightly pigmented Cheddar Man to thrive in southern Britain. His genetics paint a picture of ancestors who survived the Ice Age in southern Europe, then ventured north as hunters, tracking megafauna like reindeer and horse. This migration wasn't a single event, but a slow, multi-generational trek, culminating in Cheddar Man's life in a Britain still wild and sparsely populated. Beyond his physical appearance, Cheddar Man's other genetic data offers insights into his paternal and maternal ancestral origins. Cheddar Man's maternal and paternal haplogroups, U5B1 and I2A2, provide valuable insights into the ancestry and migration history of early Europeans. These haplogroups trace their origins to the Upper Paleolithic and Mesolithic periods and reflect the genetic landscape of pre-agricultural Europe. Cheddar Man's maternal haplogroup U5B1 belongs to the larger haplogroup U5, which is one of the oldest mitochondrial lineages in Europe. Haplogroup U5 originated around 50,000 years ago, likely in the Near East or Central Asia, before spreading into Europe with the first modern humans during the Upper Paleolithic. The U5B1 subclade emerged later, likely around 20,000 to 25,000 years ago, and was particularly common among Mesolithic groups. By the time of the last Ice Age, U5 was widespread among the hunter-gatherer populations of Europe, including the Western hunter-gatherers to which Cheddar Man belonged. Genetic evidence suggests that U5B1 remained dominant in Western and Northern Europe until the arrival of Neolithic farmers from Anatolia, who introduced new maternal haplogroups. Despite this shift, U5 persists today, especially among certain indigenous groups like the Sami of Scandinavia. Cheddar Man's paternal haplogroup I2A2 is a subclade of haplogroup I, which is the only major Y-DNA lineage believed to have originated in Europe. Haplogroup I is thought to have descended from populations that survived the last glacial maximum in southern European refugia, particularly in regions like the Balkans, Iberia, and Italy, around 20,000 years ago. After the glaciers receded, these populations expanded northward during the Mesolithic period, repopulating Western and Central Europe. The I2A2 subclade likely developed during this time and became dominant among Western hunter-gatherers, particularly in regions like Britain, France and Germany. Today, remnants of haplogroup Y2A2 can still be found in some European populations, especially in the Balkans and parts of Western Europe. Similarly, haplogroup U5B1 is still present, but at much lower frequencies compared to Neolithic and Bronze Age haplogroups. In summary, Cheddar Man's maternal haplogroup is one of the oldest in Europe and is commonly associated with Mesolithic hunter-gatherers. Its prevalence in ancient European populations suggests a long-standing presence on the continent with no recent African ancestry. His paternal haplogroup is predominantly found in European populations and is believed to have originated in Europe during the Upper Paleolithic period. The distribution of this haplogroup also supports the notion that Cheddar Man's ancestors were indigenous to Europe. The combination of these haplogroups and his blue eyes provides compelling evidence that Cheddar Man's lineage traces back to early European populations, with ancestral roots likely extending to regions in the Middle East and the Caucasus during prehistoric migrations. Cheddar Man's genetic profile, light skin, blue eyes, red hair, anchors him as a quintessential Western hunter-gatherer, a snapshot of pre-Neolithic Europe. His genome reveals a story of survival, migration and adaptation from Ice Age refugia to the forests of Mesolithic Britain. While his descendants were largely overtaken by later waves of migrants, his DNA whispers in modern Brits, a faint echo of a 10,000-year-old past.
The reanalysis of Cheddar Man's genome using advanced techniques has not only resolved long-standing debates about his appearance, but also highlighted the dynamic nature of scientific inquiry. As methodologies evolve and new technologies emerge, our understanding of the past becomes more refined. Moreover, the findings prompt a re-evaluation of how we perceive ancient populations. They remind us that human history is intricate and that our ancestors possessed a diverse range of physical traits. Such insights foster a deeper appreciation for the complexity of human evolution and migration. So the journey to uncover the true appearance and ancestry of Cheddar Man underscores the importance of continually revisiting and reassessing scientific conclusions in light of new evidence and technologies. As genetics continues to advance, it promises to unlock further mysteries of our ancient past, providing a more comprehensive understanding of where we come from. So, what did solving Cheddar Man's DNA mystery teach us? He showed us that human history isn't a straight line, it's a tangled web of migrations, adaptations and surprises. His skin, hair and eye colour challenge our assumptions about the past. His genes connect us to a world long gone, yet still alive in us. But the case isn't closed. Every new skeleton, every DNA breakthrough could flip the script again. Thanks again for joining me on this 10,000-year-old detective story. If you loved cracking this case, hit that like button, subscribe, and tell me in the comments what ancient mystery should we tackle next. Until then, keep wondering because the past is full of clues and we're just getting started. Top of the evening. I'm uh, Clark W. Griswold. We're from the United States of America. And I believe we have reservations for four. Oh. No, no, you're a scupper, mate. Still got reels of cotton seed, place full of macaroons. Of course, I could get a dog and bone to my old mate Jim to split down Whitechapel one. Daddy's speaking English. Yeah, I know. <laughs>